Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of EW Weekly Wrap Up. I'm your host, Ethan Black. Excuse me. Today, we're going to talk about the AEW shows, the two shows from the Rampage Dynamite, Grand Collision from last week. This week is Dynamite, and then give you a rundown of the upcoming shows and also Ring of Honor stuff. So, we'll just get right into it. So, we'll start with Rampage from last Friday. So, we kick it with the first of two Grand Slam Tournament Core final matches Pentagon Jr. to be Jay Lethal at 12 minutes, 7 seconds. The intro is actually with Britt Baker, Hakura Shida, and Sky Blue and a J Tile Valkyrie in the Bunny Simmons 32 seconds. In tight match, the Young Bucks, Matt Nick Jackson, defeat Angel Parker, and Matt Menard, 5 minutes and 4 seconds. In the movement, the excuse me, other core final match. Samoa Joe defeating Jeff Hardy, 8 minutes and 31 seconds. So pen- <coughs> Samoa Joe will face Pentagon in the semifinals. Also, on this show, I say I would just skip the Young Bucks. Parker and Menard match, but I will watch the rest of the show. Then we go to episode 13 of AEW Collision from Saturday, September 9th. So we kick it off with the International Online John Mox retains over Action and Dre, 11 minutes, 11 seconds. For the TBS, how Chris Dallin retains over Ron Renegade, 4 minutes and 20 seconds. In Trio's action, <clears throat> it's Boko Gold, Austin, Kong Gun, Injuries Robinson, being Aerostar, Dio Stell, and Ferrando, and Gravity, 7 minutes and 43 seconds. Ray Phoenix and Helga, 5 minutes, 50 seconds. And then our first of two semifinal matches of the Grand Slam tournament. Roger Tron to be Darby Allen, 14 minutes, 46 seconds. And then maybe the other semifinal match, Samoa Joe defeating Pentagon Jr. by submission in 15 minutes. So the final is Roger Strong versus Samoa Joe. Now, it's on this show, I said just watch the two, <clears throat> excuse me, the two semifinal matches. But we'll just get right into this week's tournament from September 13th from Cincinnati, Ohio. So the three... The three dark matches was uh, tag team match at QTV, Aaron Swan, Giant TV, doing Brain Cutter, Coke, Bana, Sky Blue, Defeat, Mirror Sphere, and NJ Top 5, Great Defeat, Ari Alexander, and Sean Aree. Those are three dark matches. And then the actual starts show starts with the hometown boy, John Mox, who retains the international title over Big Bill, 11 minutes and 27 seconds by submission via uh, Triangle Choke. I actually thought this was a really fun opening match. I just went 6 out of 10. It looked Big Bill. Keep him strong because he, he actually doesn't tap out much. Uh, I like how Stark, Brian Diaz comes out. You don't see him much on Dynamite anymore. Mm. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. But I actually really enjoyed it. The only thing Moxie did not, I don't know how he bled. I must have missed it during the picture in picture. But when I came, when he came back from break, I see he was busted on. I don't know how that happened. But honestly, like, I don't know if he meant to bleed or not, but the, the blood was unnecessary. But I still thought this was a great international title match. This is his th- second uh, title offense since winning the title back all out. Actually, let me double check that before. No, my apologies. Sorry, third, because Air Fox was the first one. So third title defense in basically like two weeks. But I, I enjoy it. I just won six out of ten. And then the postmaster stuff. Big, big Bill and Ricky. I'm a big Starks. Uh, Ricky Starks people attack Mox Dale. So Claudia Custer, the real world champion, uh, makes it safe. I actually would not mind seeing Big Bill for Claudia one on one. Actually, I should thought that'd be pretty good. Excuse me. Anyways, the backstage for Dave Paquette is with Roger Strong in the Kingdom. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold, so I do apologize if I keep coughing and clearing my throat. And if he was just about how he's gonna. Uh, defeats Mojo in the finals. And then, then we see Adam Cole, one of the ring of world tag champs. Say it was a whole ride to Edge Joker. Actually, because break his neck, because this will be the second time this year these two met in tournament action. If you forgot, the first time was at the uh, quarterfinals of the Owen Hart Cup, where Joe put him in a neck brace. That's how the neck brace thing started. But Roger Ross, he's just going to go win. So we had down to Tony He introduces Don Cows and Canales get a catch up. And he's, say, call him an ace. And he's saying the catch is better than all Japanese, like, into, especially in Tony Noki. And then, so, they're calling the catch of the Alpha now. He says he's a real one, not like they want Jericho. Then we found out the painting revealing to be Kota Abushi. To close that same, same. I'm actually pretty excited to see Kota Abushi versus Kota Abushi. We got a little preview of it all in. I feel like this is going to be at Wrestle Dream because we're Kalos hinted Enoki because it's a tribute to Enoki. That's why they're doing Wrestle Dream. I can see it being there. But I thought that was actually a good promo. 
from Don Kells and Kenosuke Takesha. But I'm, I can't wait to see Takesha and Bushi, whatever that match happens. But we're all right on all the full cards, including Green, uh, sorry, Wrestle Dream as well, because we do have two matches officially made for that show so far. And we go backstage again to some Alex Perfect with BCC, and then Dale soon challenges Big Bill Ricky Starks at uh, Collision to Saturday, and Claudio will be his tag team partner. Then we see Ray Fees yells at Moxley backstage, same with Pentagon Jr. Then we see strong oh boy Jim Eddie Kingston Starr Claudio lost his face and says one more week because they're having a title for title match at Grand Slam. I remember originally when they made the match on Collision, they didn't they just kept saying Grand Slam, so I was like, uh oh, hope's not I, I was kinda I'm glad it's on Dynamite the Live show. Just because it would ran obviously Rampage being tape, you know it's got it spoiled. So especially with a big when it's you're fine for two titles, like it should be on the live show, not the tape show. But yeah, I, I thought that backstage. And by the way, Moxley is defending your national against Ray Phoenix as well. And then we go backstage again this summer. Napika is with the FTR Jim Chuck, uh, Chuck Hook. And he, she asked him how this title reign feels different. There was the Orange Cast who walks in and asked him why he was mad and wrestled table or his body. And he got a great chance as he walks away. And I did laugh where Renee asked for Orange if he's okay. And he said he's so tired. I, I got a laugh out. That was pretty funny. But it, I think Cassie needs to go take a little nap, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, I mean, he's been champ for pretty much a year for Loza to Moxley all in. All out. Sorry, all out. But I, it was a hard must blow segment. And speaking of Grand Slam implications, we go to the women's title. No one can tell fail for a match. It's all former world, uh, women's champions. Tony Storm gets the win over Britt Baker, Hakurashi, and Nelly Rhodes. Six minutes and 24 seconds via roll up on Britt Baker. This was okay for the Warrior match. Honestly, I, I, I think they should have got more than six minutes. This, you probably could have added maybe five minutes at the most, but I don't know. Like, it wasn't it wasn't horrible. I've seen a lot of p- people on Twitter, X, sorry, saying it was horrible. I, I thought it wasn't too bad, but honestly, it was kind of predictable. You figure it was going to be Tony or Britt Baker. But Tony wins, and then, by the way, I love her new gimmick. It's just phenomenal. But I'll I might do some. I'll do a quick Grand Slam uh, predictions at the end. I, it's not technically pay per view, but it's still a special show. So I'll I'll, I'll just run that real quick. And speaking of the old cast, Renee's backstage with Ruby Soho and Woman Champs Rhea. And basically, she said she's gonna. Ever since Storm lost the women's title, she's gonna lost her mind and call her crazy. And then basically it's a full circle because Serena debut at Grand Slam, which is true. And Tony Storm was the champion, so now this year worlds are reverse. Serena champ, not Storm debuting. But basically, she says she's going to leave. Grand Slam still women's champion. The WLA sex guys come down the ring <coughs> together. And then Jericho said that it's going to be the first time they're going one on one. Love history. And then we see we're the pace is the first episode of Dynamite. And then we saw a video of all the memories between them together. And then Jericho said that Kavar looked like a little baby, which, I mean, he wasn't fully wrong. It's kind of funny. And then Kavar admitted he's still near worse than Judas, which, I mean, that, that I, I don't know why I left it that comment, but it was. And then Jericho basically talked about how he saw Kavar at the NWA 70 anniversary show. Jericho talked about on his podcast. It, it, that's a legit thing. But he wasn't a big fan of the Panda Elfin. And then basically they said, he needs to beat the man, not the 20 to Guevara. And then it's going to punch the face and guard so he won any other way. So basically, Guevara needs to win this more than Jericho, which, I mean, it's kind of true. Jer- Guevara needs it more than Jericho. But, like I said, I'll run out my grand predictions at the end of this uh, review. And then we get uh, Fletcher last week at the medical table where MJ was getting treated, and the doctor said he couldn't travel for this week's show, but he'd be ready for Grand Slam. And then MJF said Roger was fake his neck injury and he's gonna rip his head and stuck with his butt and then calls him a wet play and a third wheel and then calls him a play and B word. It's PG show, I'm not gonna swear, but you if you know the MJ probably you know what he said. And then he probably struggled with Smojo and then we got to Scott Stoner Pro. I'm not gonna try to even reenact the promo, so I'm just just watch the video, that's all you gotta do. But I thought MJF promo was pretty good. Then our third match of the show, we had him and Page with Brian Cage. Third match of the series. First time these two met in one-on-one conference since 2021. They said 
Super Brian Cage won the first match on Dynamite, I believe in April. I forget the exact date, but it was April 21. And then the second match in page one at Double or Nothing, the first one where uh, fans came back. But Heyman does get the win over Brian Cage via Dead Eye at 12 minutes and 4. This was actually a really fun match. I just won 6 out of 10. Out of the three matches, I liked their Double or Nothing one, number one, based on their second match, third match, and the first match, if I had to go in that order. But uh, this was a really fun match. I And I love Prince Nana doing the Nana. That I love that dance. And then we saw Swerve coming out. And then that got tried. I like Cage for that German suplex off the middle robot. Kind of like what Claudio does with the superplex, but instead of that. And then Paige Ray's got a microphone says Swerve. So watch him kick Cage's ass. And then he said to he sent Cage Five to do it himself. And for such had some balls now keep in Burger King crap, which that I, that got a good rise out of the crowd. And then he called Paige Stuber in the Cincinnati Educational System. And then he challenges him for a wrestle dream in his hometown of Seattle, Washington. And then we saw Cage and I attacking Paige from behind as Nana kept dancing. As we saw Young Bucks take out Cage with super kicks. And then they lay out Nana with the super kick after Nick Jackson was doing his dance. I could see him doing a trios match. Probably on either Rampage, uh, Grand Slam, or Collision. While those two... But I think they're set up for a trios match probably in the future. But overall, like I said, that was. But I'm pretty excited for the Swerve, Hey Man Pad, Hey Man Page match at uh, Wrestle Dream. Then we hit backstage again. She's with Dale Garcia. In the anniversary, he's got to tell him to ask with Jericho Guevara. Then he talked about how he went far four times, and the airs on Carter's doing his dance on Sunday, which that's actually true. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. And then we saw Don Callis walks in pitching. Garcia joined, but he stops him and he does stance for walk up and Callis calls out money. I mean, it is pretty I mean he went four or four times. I mean, come on, Don. But I can see Garcia maybe joining the um Don Callis. I actually thought, wouldn't mind that. If I had to pick a tag team group, I could actually see Butcher and the Blade joining. That'd be actually pretty cool. But overall, that prop that interview was pretty funny. Then we go to a tag match, Dorby on Nick Wayne if you Maminar, Angel Parker via coffin drop on Angel Parker at seven minutes thirty nine seconds. Honestly, this does not need to be on the. This did not need to be on the show. To be honest with you. this, probably could have been on Rampage or Collision. This did not be on Dynamite. Honestly, this match should have been taken. I'm give those extra seven minutes to the women's match. Honestly, but I just want five out of ten. And then Christian, he was on commentary during the match, and he came out. I get on my phone. Is said he's scrolling for Nick Wayne's wife's Instagram. But she don't put enough bikini pitch and just to watch about staying Darby's win at all in. Then he calls it embarrassing as but not as bad as he lose to Cleveland Browns, take a shot at the Cincinnati Ohio's team. <laughs> but he said he didn't take the loss in the match, and he also didn't have his regular partner, and everybody thought he was double edge because he's not with WWE much. I'm not gonna get into those rumors. I've seen a bunch of theories, but I'm just gonna leave that out. Before him and Luke Shores challenged seeing Darby to a match at Grand Slam. I believe that was fully official. I don't, we're just gonna say it is, but so that's what happened. Then we go to the main event, the finals of the Grand Slam tournament. Samoa Joe gets the win over Roger Ron, 11 minutes and three seconds via submission. This was a really fun match. Honestly, I like their this tournament match better than their Owen Hart combo, not by much, by a little bit, but this was fun. And honestly, this tournament was kind of predictable, but I'm not mad about either man challenge MJF. I could see Straw maybe getting shot at Wrestle Dream, or if they want, don't want to do it on October 1st, do it a full year. But I think Strong gets a world title match at the pay per view. And then Joe gets on the mic and says he's coming to MJF's back here and he's got to beat him up, take everything he had, calls him a kid again. Yeah, I like how Cole runs on there and Strong sees him and he falls screaming at him, holding his neck. That I laughed at that. That was, and then Kingdom to told Cole is his fall and do stretch it up for Strong again. And it basically Kingdom and Cole tell each other to chop as Kingdom will allow Cole to follow. And then as Cole has turned back, Joe chokes him out and then he tells and the camera to MJF that he's got to take everything from him. And that's how we close out Dynamite. Overall, actually not a bad episode of Dynamite. For, honestly, overall score, I give it a 6 out of 10. I say check out the international title match. Heyman Page with Brian Cage and the main event. That's the only three I recommend checking out from this show. But that's the Dynamite stuff. But I'll run on the cards very quick. So tonight's Rain Page. Lucha Bros. By the way, there's a spoiler. I'll say spoiler for uh, part 
of some stuff. Anyway, Lucha Bros, Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, and the Hardys, Matt and Jeff versus Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, Butcher, and Blake Eamon Tag. In Tag's match with the King of Matthew, Mike Bev versus Chris Williams, Matt Sado. Non title match, the Trio, Jim D. Clan, Anthony Bones, Matt Scott, I'm with Billy Gunn. And here's the spoiler part of who their opponents are the Outrunners, Tiro Floyd, and Trove Matt, and Peter Avalon. Another spoiler match, Aussie Open, Mike Davis, Call Fletcher versus Damon Chambers, the Lord Crew. And Chris Dallander defends the DBS title against Jay Cargo. The only two matches made for collision on Saturday. FTR defends the world titles against Iron Savages, Boulder and Bronson. And Brian Dales at Ringo, world champion Cloud Custom, a Black Bull Combo Cup. First Ricky starts to Big Bill. Their night one of Grand Slam. For I'll just give quick predictions. 8 0 world title. Honestly, out of these six matches, this is probably the hardest one to pick, but I'm gonna go with MJ up to retain as he defends the small Joe. Soraya defensive woman against Tony Stone. Obviously, Tony Stone should take the title back. Soraya shouldn't really. I get why they put the title, but honestly, she don't really need it. But I think Storm should regain it. Chris Jericho for Sammy Guevara. I could see Jericho winning, and it sets up another match. But I'm going to go with Jericho just be safe. Then a winner takes all match. New Japan Strong. Open Weight Eddie Kingston versus Rainbow World Champ. Clay Custard. Oli. This I, this one's another tough one, but I think Kingston wins since they're in their, his home. Uh, state of New York. And honestly, Eddie, Claudio did beat him at um, Grand Slam. Or, sorry, Death Force Slaughter back in March. So I could see Kingston taking it here and do, maybe they do one more match, like a two out of three falls match or something. But I could see it happening. And the international title match, John Moxley faced Ray Phoenix. Moxley just wanted, I think. I could see Ray Phoenix with a future international title in its future, but not right now. So I'm going to go with Moxley. And tag team match, Dean Team Lucy Norris, Christian Cage with Darian Sting. I'm going to go with Darby and Sting. And then Wrestle Dream Cards over for Sunday, October 1st. Brian Dales for Zack Sabre Jr., who is the New Japan Pro Wrestling TV champion. And Suarez Drake for Sam and Page. So that's AEW stuff. Then we'll go to Ring of Bar, episode 29. So there was 12 matches for uh, tape, but they only showed 11. The one they didn't show was the AAA Latin American title, QT Marshall, the V Metal League. I don't know if they'll. Because um, I know what the Emmy style ground, Mary Shafir, they did it for. A couple weeks ago, like after Dynamite, but they didn't air until that following week. So I don't know if they're going to do that again or just, just make it a dark match. But opening match was the Ring or World Tunnel. Like Chloe Cash overtake the Oracle Merrill, 10 minutes and 42 seconds. This is actually the longest match of these 11 matches. Tag to ma- six man tag to match, Dan Fair, Kali Brown, Sean D, and Willie Mack defeating the Outrunners and Kevin Koo, 7 minutes and 58 seconds. Mercedes Martinez defeats Zoe Lane, 5 minutes 21 seconds. And tag to match, and Gate to Agony. Six man tag champs, Toya, Leona, Toya, Leona, and Khan defeating Cole Rag, Matt Brent. I made it 42. There's Martin defeating Christopher Davis at six minutes. Shane Taylor defeating Lee Johnson, eight minutes and 23 seconds. Will Nine go defeating Lady Frost, five minutes, 11 seconds. Josh Woods defeating Dominic Gennari, two minutes, 56 seconds. Ethan Page defeating Griff Garrison, four minutes, 21 seconds. In tag team action, the war correspondent, Anthony Henry J. Drake defeating the boys, Brandon and Brent Tate, five minutes, 46 seconds. And the main event, AR Fox defeating Tony Nese, nine minutes, 22 seconds. Honestly, on this show, I say check out the Ring of World title match. Shane Taylor for Lee Johnson. Will Nigel for Lee Frost. That's the way three. I recommend checking it out. But that's... And we don't know what's going on for the 30th episode yet, but that's the show for this week, guys. I'm your host, Ethan Black. I'll be back next week with the usual AEW stuff. Have a good weekend and stay safe. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time